These two steps, offline then online, are underscored by an obvious but troublesome fact. That the chronological order by which one acquire ideas is highly significant to one's intellectual path. It means that once people has acquired a belief, they tend to react to counter-arguments with greater scrutiny, if not hostility, and will go easier with arguments that support their existing beliefs. In the ideal scenario, we should form our opinions by considering all the information available to us. The chronological order by which we encounter this information should not be relevant to forming our opinions. This is the commutativity of evidence principle. Reality, however, pushes us to violate this principle almost universally. The intellectual paths of all of us are quite path-dependent. We acquire new ideas based on the things we already believe in, which is dependent on our previous decisions and experiences, which are in turn conditioned by a host of social and historical forces outside of our awareness and control. We are entangled in this path dependence fallacy almost entirely unconsciously, mostly because we are unable to perceive them. You cannot decide on something if you cannot see them. And nothing sets us to a path more firmly than our early life environment. Parental values, habits, education, socioeconomic status, racial and other identity markers. All of them outside of our control. To put it in dramatic terms, we are rarely aware that we are in epistemic bubbles because we have always been in one since birth. And many of us lead their lives, never deviating from their starting point in any meaningful way. This is where the algorithms would continue our existing path dependence. The consumer internet experience nudges the user to stay in their existing bubbles. Your online signatures, such as your search record on Google and engagement history on Facebook, composes your profiles on these platforms. These data are then used to suggest content and advertisements that appeal to you. We can immediately identify two problems in this arrangement. One is individual privacy, which has been gradually addressed by these companies' adoption of depersonalized data capture, which aims to know only what your desires are without actually knowing who you legally are. The second concern is that it creates, namely, epistemic bubbles, or specific to search engines, filter bubbles, which is when the algorithm sets the user down to a content path dependence, where the user won't even be aware that the content they will be receiving in the future, perhaps forever, is defined by their early search decisions. If you start off by searching for opinions against abortions, you'll keep finding content of that alignment. You'll be discovering more arguments against abortion, ones that you haven't considered before, thus reinforcing your original opinion. Further, single issues such as abortion would open a user to an alignment of opinions on a host of issues, such as those against gay rights and taxation. Or if you already believe that Trump's election was influenced by the Russians, not by America's domestic problems, then it will be difficult to convince you that Cambridge Analytica's micro-targeting program actually didn't work. Which means, to repeat a point I made earlier, you won't notice that a platform is not a window to the world, but a mirror for everyone's individual desires.